Julian Fedon, the Fedon Rebellion, 1790. See what? See. Are you recording? Yeah, man. Uh, I'm recording her face. Recording my face. This is for my YouTube history. Hi. YouTube history. But just think about it, Julian Fedon. Transatlantic slave trade, persisting from the year 1500 to 1867, was the largest forced migration of people in human history. Historians modestly estimate that 12.5 million Africans were ripped from their homes and dispersed throughout the Americas between that time frame. However, though the transatlantic slave trade lasted from the 16th into the 19th century, with the intensifying greed and opportunities of European and African merchants alike, the slave trade expanded like never before in the late 18th century. The intensification of the transatlantic slave trade in the second half of the 18th century meant that there were proportionately more Africans in colonial America. In fact, by 1820, enslaved Africans made up 80% of all people who embarked for the Americas since the year 1500. And with more enslaved Africans in colonial America also meant more resistance to enslavement. This rise in rebellions against the institution of slavery coincided with the Enlightenment era in the Atlantic world and all that that entailed. As European commoners and their descendants were demanding freedom and justice in their respective lands, so too were the Africans. By the 1790s, these two worlds would collide, the world of the European Enlightenment and the world of slave resistance in the form of rebellion and revolution. In 1789, the French Revolution sparked turmoil throughout the French, Spanish, and British Caribbean. Enslaved populations throughout the various islands took advantage of the chaos to seek freedom for themselves. There was the Haitian Revolution, which began as a slave rebellion in the French sugar colony of Saint-Domingue and resulted in the first black republic and the second Euro-recognized independent country in the Americas by 1804. They named their country Haiti. However, in the 1790s, this revolution was just one of many rebellions that sprang up throughout the diaspora. The world of the slave traders was shook, and for good reason. In addition to Haiti, one would find black rebellions in Martinique, Dominica, St. Lucia, Guadeloupe, Jamaica, St. Vincent, Curaçao, and last but not least, Grenada. On the night between March 2nd and 3rd, a free person of color of mixed African and French descent from Grenville, Grenada, named Julian Fedon, liberated and armed his enslaved and began to wage war on the British that night, killing every Englishman that they came across. Look out. He turned around and got the Starbucks like this without breaking eye contact with the chains everywhere. No. And then he gave, he gave him the Starbucks saying, is there anything else? And he's like, he's like, no, get away from me, you freak, and slashed up the Starbucks and ran away. Go go pet that girl. Because she was really so heavy. She was Get away from me, you freak, and slashed up the face. She's like, yeah, she was bending backwards. She's like, I'm like, this is getting Starbucks. Where did she get the question? Really? This is not how people look at me. Because she's saying, you're saying, like, oh, she's just like, 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 she's uh, I'm the owner of Nature Lovers Tours. You can find us on Facebook, Instagram. We do hikes all over Grenada, all right? And also other Caribbean islands. Currently, I am not in my full hiking at attire because I am leaving Grenada tomorrow to go and do hike in Dominica. So oh. all of my ropes and so on, I can wear them today. I went to that hike in Dominica. Which one you went to? It was, the, lake? Uh, it was the one down towards the south. Mont Anglais, I think. Oh, yeah, Mont Anglais. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. a mountain, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. So I, so I cannot come with most of, much of my hiking attire because I can't have them getting wet and to put them back into the bags because it's you know, smell fun. Yeah. yeah so uh, usually we don't do no hikes during the week. We only do hikes on Sundays because I'm a school teacher and also too we do dentistry like we travel around the Caribbean giving free dental health care. So today was our exception. All right. We don't really do hikes during the week. Only on Sundays and when I'm on holidays. All right. So you do teeth removal? Huh? You do teeth removal? Yeah, we do. Um, Everybody raise your hand. Who's ready for a teeth removal, teeth <laughs> extraction? 
You want <laughs> that's a grown up tooth. You don't want to take that one out. You want dent you want you want uh braces or something. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, if it took this out, it's it's not going back. Yeah. 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 Alright, so today we're going to Fed and Scam. That's the second highest mountain on the island. It's two thousand five hundred and ten feet above sea level. So if you look if you if you look to the back over there, that's where we're going to, alright? But the mountain is to more to the back of this one. So we're gonna be hiking on this ridge. All the way go up to the mountain. Alright? It usually takes us about two hours to two hours and a half to get up. And coming back down about an hour and a half. Alright? But you're gonna be very muddy because of all the rain we got for the past couple of days. So you're gonna fall a lot, slide and fall. Uh, that's the kind of fun. Yeah. Alright? <laughs> so let's go and have fun today. And also too, I'll be taking um, pictures and the pictures will be posted on um both film and Instagram on the page. Alright. So if you haven't followed the pages yet, you can do so. Nature lovers too. Alright? So let's go and have fun. Sounds good. Thank you. Yeah. Um when you been to Dominican? What? When you uh, 2015. Oh okay. Yeah. Uh, every year like we take people from across the Caribbean to join the hiking there. Yeah. Uh, anyway, it don't matter because we have some folks coming from Texas as well this year. Oh nice. Yeah. Yeah, I went there because I was doing research. Okay. I, my dissertation for graduate school was on um the Dominica Maroons. Oh, okay, all right, all right. So I was I was writing all about that. So going went to the archives in England and I went to the archives in Dominica okay. and then I also wanted to get the experience. Alright, so you're a teacher student then? Say it again? History student? Yeah, no, yeah. well I was. Yeah. I'm, okay. a, I'm a professor, history professor now. Okay, yeah. Yeah. I, I studied history as well. Yeah. Yeah, I love it. Nice. Yeah. And then, she, and then he started yelling at her. He's like, I'm, he's like, I'm taking you now. And she started crying like, no, please, please. And then, and then she got dragged down. In the years prior. The rebellion was being planned on Fedon's Belvedere estate. According to historian Michael Creighton, the governor of Grenada, Ninian Home, in 1794 wrote to his brother in Scotland that the French revolutionary spirit was poisoning the minds of the enslaved population. Also throughout the year, 1794, Julian Fedon, who was dissatisfied with the governorship of Ninian Home, which stripped away basic rights that the Catholic free people of color of French extraction enjoyed, planned an insurrection against what he perceived to be a tyrannical government. Anti-French laws living under the British colonial government, French revolutionary ideals, and African resistance to enslavement combined all contributed to the revolutionary spirit in the air that March of 1795. Victor Hugues, a French revolutionary organizing rebellions throughout the Caribbean, named Fedon, commanding general of Grenada. This organized assault began with a simultaneous assault on Grenville on the east side and Guave, also known as Charlestown, on the opposite coast. In the first assault on Grenville, Fedon and his men killed 12 whites before withdrawing to Belvedere with arms and resources. On the opposite side of the island, Fedon's lieutenants rounded up several important figures before they had time to take flight. Fedon's revolutionaries had successfully cut off the capital from the countryside with the assistance of the French privateers. Governor Holm, not realizing that Guave was taken by the revolutionaries, fell right into their trap. By March 4th, at 10 a.m., Julian Fedon wanted a truce, but was demanding the surrender of the island by the British by noon. The acting governor, Kenneth Mackenzie, rejected Fedon's demands and issued a proclamation promising amnesty to the revolutionaries who returned to their duties and who were not guilty of murder. In addition, the acting governor offered a bounty for every insurgent taken dead or alive. Fedon threatened that if the British colonials made any attempt to approach his camp, he would kill all the prisoners, which included the governor Ninian Home and 43 other hostages. By April, after a failed attack by the British colonials, Fedon and his men executed the 48 of the 51 prisoners at Fedon's camp, including the British colonial governor himself. All right, we're on the trail, heading towards Fedon's camp. Julian Fedon. Why? 
How y'all doing? Get off your step. Yeah. Oh, I can't do it. Hang in there. I'm throwing these out. Taking my way now. I have a sweat starting to pour down the face. The work, this is where the workout begins. Were you recording? No. Oops. Okay. Good. Why can't I just wear this here under? Yeah. Oh. Alright, so now we're on the uh, on, on the trail to fed on. Alright, so we are just making our way to come over to the trail. Alright. So you're gonna get very steep and muddy. <laughs> you're gonna get? Which yeah, one? yeah. <laughs> so it already is. <laughs> what do you mean? Anybody need water? I do. Take a water break. I need water. Oh, no, no, no. Alright, yeah, so drink your water before we start climbing. Could I help you? Someone fell off the mountain. I was knocking off the tree. Oh. I'm not I'm not to walk. Yeah. I'm hoping well what I mean I'm, I'm hoping. Guys, can I have my water? By uh, at least two o'clock so I can meet you down. Hmm? Can I have my water? Yeah. Hear me? Alright. Can I go now? Yeah. Is this for Don's swing? Or do you want him to take a break? He came out here and... <laughs> There's too much war. <laughs> it has some fun. Can I go next, Floppy? Yo, please stop. Asking. Who is we now? Are we going back the same way? Are we going yeah, back the same way? Oh, can you have water? Same way. Yeah. Dad, can you get water? Uh, and and towards the top. Say hello, guys. Say what's up, Penelope. There you go, Penelope. Penelope. You're, you're right, Penelope. <laughs> She's so serious. You mean that your wallpaper? Yes. No, I'm, I'm going to put it on my PC, my computer. This is where Fedon is, is near his camp? Yeah. 400. So, like, his nearest camp is over on the western side of the mountain. Okay. So we climb in the mountain like from the eastern side. Ah, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Can you pass that to Dylan, please? Dylan. Pass this to Dylan. Pass this to Dylan. Want your water? It should be in the bottom So we're what, 2,200 feet? About that. 2,000. We two. should be like 2,100 something. 2,100 something? Yeah. So we have roughly about 400 more people. Okay. Nice. Yes? Wow. Yeah, once, okay, so once we reach to the second base, getting over to Fedon is pretty much flat. Flat? It's like, it's like a flat. Yeah. To go to Fedon. Hallelujah. Only, only one here we have to climb, and it's not any bigger. Oh, hallelujah. Yeah. You could jump down here. Because I don't know if I could do this. Man, why don't they, why don't you guys, like, get a helicopter and tell it to go up there so when we get there, it just picks up? Oh, well, yeah. There we go. Why don't we think so of that? 
Oh, yeah. Can I do the heart? Or you could just do it. Get me there. You're stepping on my foot. Oh, yeah. Bro, I haven't gotten water ever since we started, so. How y'all feeling? Bad. Mm -hmm. I'm thirsty. My legs are burning. Good. good. What doesn't kill you will only make you stronger. That's right. Yes. So is this is this the uh yeah, from here we move to pedals. Like if you look over in the distance over there, that's pedals camp in the back of the door. So, yeah, it usually take us like 30 minutes to get over there. Yeah. But it's pretty much flat from here to there, oh. but there's only one hill to climb and another hill to get to pedals. Thirteen or thirty. Yeah. All of them. Yeah. 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 Yeah for anybody who don't fall coming down, but I, I wasn't involved in it because they say I wouldn't fall. Oh. So yeah. everybody trying to be so careful coming down. Oh, you but, but the one person wanted, he was a police officer. Oh, police yeah, yeah, he didn't fall at all. <laughs> How do you not fall in this? I, I, on the way down, I'm, gonna just, I'm just going to slide. When it ain't rained in That's prior true. months. Yeah. <laughs> Super dry. Nah, it was wet the day. Oh. Rain fell that day. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Rain pretty much falls almost every day up here. Yeah. As historian Michael Creighton stated, Fidon met secretly with his comrades at his Belvedere plantation to plot the rebellion and organize an army of slaves. He continues by stating that, quote, As we can see even today, this was a splendid base for guerrilla insurrection. The location was a high valley bisecting the island, remote from St. George's, the capital, but commanding both coasts, densely wooded, split by streams, and backed by the mountain redoubt, still known as Fedon's camp. 2,509 feet. Close quote. Daily, Africans continued to self-emancipate from the plantations to assist the revolutionary process. Many of them began to commit arson to plantations contributing largely to the financial demise of the British enterprise in the island. After the slaughter of April 7th, acting Governor Mackenzie decided to put the British colonial troops on the defensive in St. George's, giving the rest of the island to the black revolutionaries. By the end of the year, Grenada, had virtually become a black republic, controlled by black revolutionaries in all parishes but St. George's. Of the 28,000 enslaved Africans on the island, at least 7,000 of them actively participated in the rebellion. However, after a series of defeats by the overwhelmingly African insurgency, the British colonial government decided to defeat black rebels with black troops. The West India Regiment, a corps of African soldiers drafted straight off the boats directly from Africa were utilized against the black revolutionary wars in the Caribbean throughout the 1790s. But also, a group of loyal black rangers were drafted in Grenada specifically to bring an end to the black revolutionary movement. Some historians surmise that if it had not been for the British deciding to use black troops against the black revolutionaries, the British could have easily lost the entire island in the same way that Haiti was lost by the three European colonial powers that tried to take it. Where's Mount Kwakwa? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We did? Yeah. yeah. Not and then... really. We're going the same way we came. No, we can just jump off the pool. Look what this is. Unless you're willing to. Unless you, have a 30 minute break. unless you can fly. Site of the Don's Camp 1795. Unless you can. Unless you can fly. You can jump right down there. Look at this. Yeah. The trees the like tree, no, the, the, the trees are yeah. overgrown. Yeah. So uh, before you can get no, like even yeah, get a 360 view of her again. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Next yeah. reunion, I'm not doing this again. I know y'all can go and have fun in the mud. I will gladly watch. And what's the name of this mountain peak called? Yeah, Fedon's Camp. Oh, that's what, that's the name of it. Yeah, Fedon's Camp. Yeah. And that's the second highest mountain on the island. Right now we are on Fedon's Camp in Grenada. Tour guys gonna give us a little history How lesson it on it as well. Uh, two hours. Woo! We started roughly. We started roughly about mm, um, minutes to twelve. So our tour, the tour stops. Yeah, twelve minutes. I don't want to pay so high. I want to pay so high.
No? Back the same way. Does everybody have hand sanitizer? We're gonna, be, we're gonna be sliding. I already know that. So even from here, you can see Granan's Beach down there. Yeah. I can't see because I don't have my glasses on. Oh. oh. Yes. Do you have hand sanitizer? Yeah, I can't really see it. Well. Exactly. Yep. Sure. Just water, grab please. the one that's already drinking. Oh, can I have the water, please? Uh, she's bringing is it bread. this one? Yeah, thank you. You sure? Here you go. Thank you. Uh, let me close up your bag. That was tough. I'd say... I'd say that that ranks more difficult than from Mount Kwakwa to Concord Falls. I'd say it's more difficult. I don't know. Today, maybe because I'm getting older. I don't okay. know. <laughs> I have a bad hip. But which one do you think is harder? I think the from Grand Canyon to Concord is harder. Yeah? Yeah. But it's probably based on where you're doing from. If you're doing from Concord to Grand Canyon, then you do more mountain climbing from the Concord then. No, I, I, I went, I went from, the, from, from, from Grand Canyon. Grand Grand yeah, so you're mainly down here. going, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But this one is longer though. The one from yeah. Grand Canyon to Concord. Yeah, here is much shorter. Yeah. yeah. Um, that was tough. I have a, I, I have a bad hip right okay. now, so it was just tough just picking that leg okay. up. And I should have worn a tighter belt because these shorts are falling off. Yeah. Uh, hey, Jill. Yeah. You just didn't like a champ, man. I didn't hear any complaints from you. Nah, she didn't. Uh, she was one of them that didn't come here at all. Yeah. Good job, man. Mm -hmm. You were like ahead of everybody. <laughs> you, you're like out there like a champ, man. Mm -hmm. How do you feel? I'm tired, but I'm I did it. I I go home. I we're go home. here. Well, we're gonna go home, but we gotta. Go descend down the mountain. Get there. How do you feel? We, we went up. We can go down. Bad. I just won't. But do you feel accomplished? No. No. Okay. It's raining. I want to go back to the house. Well, I see them and sleep. Too. But do you feel accomplished? Kind of. Wow. I am. Right now, you might not feel great, but tomorrow I'm morning, you're gonna, man, I, I, I can't believe I did the dance camp, and I got all this That's footage to show business. you doing it, and you're gonna be able to tell everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah proof. Yeah, I wear glasses. Feel, I just didn't wear them. Feel accomplished. I feel great. I typically wear glasses. It was tough, and I was saying, I don't want to do this, but I think I'm gonna do it in three years. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm also hungry. Yeah. Can I have How do you feel? Yep. My legs are burning. Good. Good. But you feel accomplished, right? Yeah. Mission accomplished. Good. Good. We still have to go all the way back down. I know, right? <laughs> I'm That's, trying not to no. think about that. I'm you not feel? trying to think Great. about back down. Ready to go up another the mountain. Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm talking about. You <laughs> see that? <laughs> Ready to go up another mountain. Oh. How do you feel? Feel so good. Feel good. Feel good. Yeah. Last, last little bit got to me. Yeah. Mission, but mission feel, accomplished. Feel good. Mission yeah. accomplished. Yeah. Nice, yeah. nice, yeah. nice. Yeah. By the spring of 1796, the black troops and the other reinforcements brought from the neighboring islands succeeded in cutting off Fedon and his men from the essential resources and food. By June 19th of 1796, the war in Grenada had come to an end. Many rebel leaders leapt to their death, while several others died of starvation or in battle. Julian Fedon, on the other hand, was never captured. Some reports say he escaped to Trinidad on a boat, while others say that he fled to Cuba. Wherever he escaped to, his rebellion truly had an undeniable impact, not only on Grenada, but on Britain and the overall Atlantic world. The British planters and merchants depended on Grenada heavily throughout the late 18th century. Grenada was Britain's most productive sugar colony after Jamaica. The island had 28,000 enslaved people before the war, in which one-fourth of them perished. The annual expenditures in the island went from 11,167 before the rebellion to an estimated 132,664 pounds after the rebellion. The total losses between 1795 and 1798 were 2 million sterling. In the years during the Fedon Rebellion, 
the importation of African captives waned and never picked back up to the numbers pre-rebellion before the abolition of the transatlantic slave trade in 1807. Moreover, it could be argued that the British decision to abolish the transatlantic slave trade, in large part, has much to do with the several slave wars taking place throughout the Caribbean, many of which had large African participation. These African rebellions throughout the Caribbean contributed greatly to forcing the hand of the British to abolish the transatlantic slave trade in 1807, which was just 11 years after the end of the rebellion, and, later, contributing to the ultimate end of slavery in 1834, when a series of rebellions of Creole populations proved to be just as damaging to the system. Still, I'm so good. Let's make my it friend on. from college. Oh, she's really? actually here right now. It was like on me and I had to pull it off. Oh, my, my friend. Your son feels real she good right now. She's in college. She's also Grenadian. Her family resides in St. George. And she was she's actually here, but she left because she was leaving today. She's headed to the airport as well, but why didn't you meet her sometime? I was like I didn't she's know she was here till the last minute. Second cousins. But whatever, I'll see you on campus. <laughs> right, Penelope? What? Second cousins? Second cousin love? What's a second cousin? It's when two kids are saying it. No, me. 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 Mm, it's that's right. Um, cousins share the same great, great, uh, same great grandparents. Yeah. Exactly. See, that's another way to define it. When you share the same great grandparents, your what second cousin. Not, not it. Not it. What? Mm. What makes it last? Oh, now you, you got the second win now. Good luck getting down there. Yeah. Bye, Peter. Bye, Peter. See, See you later. See you on the other side. Yeah, how do you expect to get down when you can barely throw yeah, the whole rock? All right, so guys, so this. Listen up, guys. Right, so, guys, this is for one minute, so I don't keep it long one minute. So, we're just gonna do like the history of this area here, the reason why it's called Fedon's Camp. So, Julian Fedon, he was a French planter. He had owned the Belvedere estate, right? Uh, and um, so, Grenada was shared between French English, French English. And when the English took over Grenada, he led a rebellion against the English uh, in Grenada, right? So, he and a couple um, slaves and Africans, they fought against uh, the British and that was the main hideout area so the reason why here is a good hideout area is they had a 360 view of what was happening if you do the history like there's there enough time when they used to see the ships docking over there dropping off um, like the English soldiers and so on and they sort of run all the way back down there to try to block them to capture them also here is also a place where they kill over 50 British soldiers they captured 50 British soldiers in St. John's in Guelph and march them up here and stop them here all right so well the camp don't the camp uh is not remained anymore because i guess over time everything got damaged but they just leave this clock here in remembrance of julian Fedon. all right nice. um rebellion was going on the capital of grenada was um not munich um, was it, was it, in San Andrew. Was it, oh, was it Greenville? No, not Greenville. But um, well, the capital was in San Andrew at the time. It was Maki. Maki. Maki was the capital of Grenada. And at the time, St. St. Davis also had a capital. It was called Megrin. But that was destroyed by Fedon's rebellion as well. Okay. Yeah. Nice. That's how St. Davis has no tongue. That's more than the current. Nevertheless, it was in these hills that these black Grenadian revolutionaries engaged in guerrilla warfare and put a dent in the institution of slavery to the point that it had to come to an end. And in these hills, my family and I had the opportunity to feel some of the pain and sweat and struggle that Fedon and his men had to go through every day in the fight for their freedom. Anyway, that's it, y'all. Thank you for watching. Peace.